Good morning, YouTube. Man, it's been a while since I came on here for a dedicated video, but uh, I got something different for you guys today. My first ever YouTube video, breaking down the tanks of Overwatch 2 and evaluating their strengths and weaknesses based on a five-star system of these criterias. One, overall tankiness. Two, damage. Three, mobility. Four, utility. Five, ultimate. And number six, fun. Also, just a quick heads up, on uh, October 7th, over on Twitch, they'll be doing drops. So I will be streaming on my channel, uh, twitch.tv slash flats, if you want to drop by and farm the drop uh, for a legendary Kiriko skin and just say hi, I'd appreciate it. Also, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you enjoy this video, you'll sub. Deal? All right, let's go into it. Let's start with Junker Queen. First up, Junker Queen. Tankiness, I gotta give her two stars. Queen made her first appearance in the second Overwatch 2 beta and in the Overwatch season, Summer Showdown. Her shout showed her survivability with 100 HP given to teammates and 200 given to herself. With Lucio and Brig beside her in Overwatch League, the meta was nicknamed Jotes, reminiscent of the old GOATS comps, aka 3 tanks, 3 supports. Since then, she's been severely nerfed. Her shout only gives 50 health to teammates and the duration is significantly lowered from 5 to 3 seconds, as well as increasing the cooldown from 11 to 15 seconds. This made her brawl like Ryan without the damage or the sustainability of up close tanks. AKA, she's kind of awful now. Which goes into point number two, her damage, which I can only give her one star for. Queen has the lowest damage of what I would consider the off tanks. I know she never got to be a part of the two tank gameplay of Overwatch 1, but with her health and lack of armor, I would have thrown her in the off tank category. That said, her damage is quite lackluster. To pull a solo kill on a 200 HP target with her, you need to land a knife, shoot, pull, shoot again like you're shooting skeet, melee, and on a 200 HP target without them getting any healing, you'll then get a kill. Putting this next to tanks like Hog or Sigma, who have far much better survivability or team utility, plus with how difficult it is to hit a knife consistently, makes her both difficult and not as good as the rest of the roster. Also, Hog's combo is much stronger, requiring only a hook and a follow-up shot to earn a solo kill. In my opinion, buffing Queen's damage will be an effective way to make her stronger without the game-breaking effects of the extra teammate health from Shout. For Junker Queen's mobility, I can only give her 1.5 stars, and that's a little generous. Junker Queen is a static brawl tank similar to Reiner Zarya. However, you get a small speed boost with her shout, which is great for either engaging or disengaging, or my favorite, which is how I use it, using it to keep myself alive and move when I use Junker Queen's ultimate to go in. Her ult can put you far out of position behind enemy lines, so the speed boost to get back out, as well as the extra health, is great to use to keep yourself alive. For her utility though, I have to give Junker Queen only two stars, and I think again I may be being a little generous. If this was previous Junker Queen, this could have easily been three or four stars. However, the nerf to her shout is only used about once a fight, maybe. It remains to be seen if she will get a buff back to her shout or somewhere else in her kit, but a buff is definitely going to be needed for her. I will say I don't think buffing her shout is the correct call, however. It feels oppressive to play against, and fights drag on for way too long. If more power is given to the Queen, I hope it's not to her shout. In Overwatch League, we saw how long fights were going on, and sometimes kills weren't happening for two or three minutes. For her ultimate, I can give her four stars. Jugger Queen ultimate is very good, antiing the entire enemy team, causing bleeds with a huge radius. It should be easily five stars, and if this was the Overwatch second beta, she would have been. That was before we have Kiriko. Kiriko's Cleansing Suzu, her E ability, provides real counterplay to Junker Queen's ult. What's keeping me back from the 5 stars is both the follow-up needed from teammates to get team wipe kills as well as Kiriko's Suzu. Tank ults in Overwatch 2 are in a lot of ways the big fight winners, and Queen's ult, although is very good, does need follow-up while something like Sigma Flux does not need as much. The downside is there are also a very long charge-up time. I think that many low-ranked players, especially those on Koth maps, will not build a single queen ult. I found myself in the Overwatch 2 beta many times being lucky to get even one. The massive charge timer is not worth the value currently in my opinion, and if her damage was increased, that could change. However, if she was doing more damage, then her ult would be charging faster. 
For fun, I gotta give Junker Queen five stars. Her gameplay is an absolute masterpiece. Her abilities flow well, and the ability as a tank to give yourself over health plus speed is every tank player's dream come true. The rush of hitting the knife, pulling it in, and hitting a big headshot on a target is an amazing rush as a player. A 10 out of 10. Hope to see Queen make a comeback, especially for all the new players who maybe didn't get the chance to play her in beta 2. Oh boy. <laughs> Doomfist. Um, this one's got a lot around him, so let's just, let's just get into it. I gotta give him for tankiness one star. Doomfist got a rework from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, for those that don't know, to go from a DPS to a tank. He still in many ways behaves the same as he has to commit in in order to get value, and if you don't nail your cooldowns, well, you're gonna look like me feeding out there. Doom has a low HP pool, and he's supposed to get value through hitting punches and slams to gain shields, similar to Overwatch 1. But if you aren't hitting these abilities, not only are you not doing damage or stuns, but you're also very squishy for a tank and easy to kill. There's also a number of counters to Doomfist and his ability to block, which is used to absorb incoming damage and provide the power-up punch ability. This one-time punch travels twice as far, twice as fast, and can stun enemies who hit a wall for a full second. Great for getting kills on 200 HP targets. It can be countered with Sleep Dart, Hook, Rock, Javelin, Rhyme Pin, and oh, did I mention Kiriko's Suzu makes it that you punch straight through targets if they're hit by it? Yeah. Have fun with that one. Doofus's tankiness is really not where his power is supposed to be, but I worry for low rank players. For Doomfist's damage, I can't give him any higher than two stars. Doomfist's power doesn't come in raw damage, it's in his ability to hit cooldowns and to stun enemies and inflict a small amount of damage while also giving himself more shield. His big play is to get in with his power-up punch, punching a 200 HP target into a wall, which can also hit multiple enemies. And while this is a great way to get a solo kill on Doom, this, however, doesn't happen often. Doom AoE Slam does also do a small amount of damage as well as gain shield. And comboing this with this slam, punch, block, and overall crazy amount of mobility is a great way to keep the enemy constantly vigilant to being stunned is where Doom draws his power. However, though, Doomfist is definitely a little bit behind in the damage department. For mobility, Doom gets a very, very solid five stars. And I'll admit it, Doomfist is so much fun to roll out back from spawn with. I've gotten pretty good at it as I seem to be dead a lot. Doomfist arguably has the greatest movement in the game and how far he can travel plus comboing with sliding it off a roof and delaying the fall to get your cooldowns back up sooner in the next fight. Seriously, it's a ton of fun. Watching good Doomfist touch the skybox and come back down, hit the B, A, A, up, down, B, Z combo on the enemy and then get out alive is such a treat. And I hope to get good at Doomfist myself someday, but for now, I'm just going to enjoy the unbelievable range I can get by comboing a punch into a slam. Doomfist's mobility is a solid five stars from me. His utility, though, I have to say it's only about a two star rating. And at this point, it's really hard to rate where I should put him. Doomfist is ultra reliant on hitting his cooldowns, but if he does, he can make some serious space for your team while also staying alive. You also may not be getting big solo kills on Doom, but when you do get them, they're nice but at least you'll definitely make the enemy support start fights with the rest of the team for not peeling. It's not about winning, it's about psychological warfare. Oh, if you thought tankiness was going to be the lowest for Doom, I present to you his ultimate. 0.5 stars. Honestly, I think I'm generous giving him even a half a star. His ult is ass. It's terrible. It's probably the worst tank ult in the game, and maybe the worst ult in the game, period. It only does real damage if you hit on the center ring, and that is a very prediction-reliant shot. The outer rings do very little damage, but the big win for Doomfist is survivability. Being able to feed your ass off going in and then ulting to save yourself is his biggest saving grace. There's also the cooldown reduction while you're in the air, which means that while you're in the air on Doomfist, cooldown reduction is multiplied by two, meaning that you'll have your cooldowns likely back up again by the time you hit the ground. When Grav Doom Ult was a combo in Overwatch 1, it was a decent option, but now with one tank, you can kiss that dream goodbye. Doom Ult needs some serious help. For fun, overall, I'd give Doom about a three stars. I wasn't crazy about it when I played Doomfist, but I have to admit, flying across the map was a lot of fun. Being able to fly halfway across the map and punching five players into a wall with a power-up punch is super rewarding. However, the low damage and not a lot of solo fragging potential can be a real fun killer, especially when you aren't being patient and end up eating it on a sleep dart and a hog hook and back to spawn. 
I did that a lot. Let's move on to the big one. My favorite hammer swinging friend, Reinhardt, who I have to give a total of five stars in the tankiness department. Reinhardt is very tanky in Overwatch 2. The 625 HP pool, consisting of 300 armor and 325 health, plus a 1200 HP barrier, is ideal for soaking up tons of damage. However, that's all he can really do. Be a long-lasting punching bag. Now hear me out on this. Reinhardt has always been what I would consider the best overall tankiness hero in Overwatch 2. However, it's honestly just not enough. In the first Overwatch 2 beta, Reinhardt had an extra 50 armor than he does now. There was also a bug that made the damage calculation for armor wrong, thus she would take far less damage than intended. This made him much tankier than they wanted, and though I must say, even though he was good, like second best tank good, he was still not number one. That title went to Winston, so why the nerf? Great question. Ryan received a 50 armor nerf going into beta 2, while also the bug for armor damage calculations was fixed. In essence, a double nerf. Reinhardt needs to be tanky to be good. He is one of the OG tanks and can only do one function at a time. That either being shielding or doing damage. Looking at you, Sigma. I like to describe Ryan this way. Say you're designing a simple 1v1 game set in an open field with no cover. You choose one of two classes, a melee character or a sniper character. In this instance, the sniper character keeps winning. So how do you make the melee character more viable? The answer is to make it so that you can get to the sniper to do damage whether that's to take more hits or another alternative. Blizzard's philosophy is to make the melee character do more damage. Thanks, Blizzard. In all seriousness, players love Reinhardt, myself included, and I hope I get to play more of my hammer swinging front of Overwatch 2. But for now, I seem to have gotten a bit off track, so let's come on back. For Reinhardt, damage, I gotta give him four stars. Reinhardt is a, such a hard hero to rank for damage, though, because his raw damage is very good. If you can get into a group of enemies and just start swinging, you can be an absolute menace. The problem is getting there. The one big damage change for Reinhardt is that he now has two fire strikes instead of one, being able to do much more consistent range damage. However, it is now nerfed down to 90 damage down from 100. Probably not going to be getting any more of those juicy window fire strike clips, which I for one am devastated for. I actually had one in a recent playtest and I got three people hit with it, and none of them died, and then I died. I won't lie to you, that was a little tilting. For mobility, I can only give Reinhardt one star. Reinhardt doesn't really have any movement abilities other than pin, but the big one is that Reinhardt is the only tank in Overwatch 2 that requires another teammate to pick a certain hero so that you can perform your duties properly, with that hero being, of course, Lucio. But that also requires your other support to pick a stronger healing support, such as Kiriko, Ana, Moira, Bap, so basically, you need all hands on deck to play Ryan well. Mobility for Reinhardt is not good. He moves slower with his shield up, which also makes closing the distance on retreating enemies difficult without Lucio's assistance. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, the famous Reinhardt charge. Every player has seen the Reinhardt who is fearlessly pinning off cooldown, and the famous line of unbind pin became a staple of annoyed support players everywhere. But I'm here to tell you, charge is good, kinda. You can now cancel pin, which gives some crazy potential for plays. My favorite being charging someone off the map, but instead of like old Overwatch where you both go over, you just drop them off the edge and wave goodbye. The other one being is a bait, where you bait the enemy Ryan to counter pin you, but you stop early, then nail him and his team for a big five man slam. Ah, that really does hit different. For Ryan's utility, I gotta give him about three stars. Reinhardt's main utility is his shield, the highest HP shield in the game. The downside to that though is Ryan cannot be dealing damage while shielding, as well as he moves much slower while the shield is up. I'm here to tell you Ryan players that you need to stop listening to the players telling you to be a shield bot. Seriously, it did not work in Overwatch 1 and it will not work in Overwatch 2. I'm here to tell you, unless you're crossing through chokes filled with spam, your shield is mostly a selfish tool that can be beneficial to teammates that choose to follow you. Be aggressive, swing hard, and shield as you need not your teammates standing still. If they have a problem with this, you can link them this video. Seriously though, don't be a shield bot in Overwatch 2. I promise you'll have a more fun time and you'll be a better player. For Reinhardt's ultimate, I can only give him 1.5 stars. How far Shatter has really fallen. But wait, before you jump and hear me out, Reinhardt's Shatter has been nerfed many, many times as an ultimate in its lifespan, but the most recent one was going from a three second stun to a 2.5 second stun, which doesn't sound like much, but it is. 
They removed the Swing Swing Fire Strike combo of old, where you could get solo kills on targets that you shattered. The 0.5 seconds gives times for enemies to stand up and respond, especially if they're closer to the edge of the shatter range. But that's not all. The big one. The reason why I'm giving it a rating of 1.5 is simple. Kiriko. Kiriko's Suzu, her new cleanse ability, added at the start of Overwatch 2. It cleanses all statuses such as bleed, anti, and stuns. It only lasts about one second. Actually, it's 0.75 seconds to be exact, which is a good thing versus things like Junkrat Tire as it's a proactive tool, meaning it needs to be used beforehand as a prediction to save teammates. However, with Shatter, it's a reactive tool. That's a nightmare to play against. A Shatter at any point can be cleansed by her Suzu, and any targets will instantly stand up. But hey, at least the impact does 250 damage. For those who don't remember, that was my uh, change that I proposed during the creator experimentals last year. So, glad to see it in the game. For overall fun, you know where this is going. I'm going to give Ryan that five stars. This would realistically be like three or four stars, but I just can't do it, man. I have to give Ryan five stars. That rush of adrenaline when you have that game on Ryan, you know the one I mean. You completely dominate the Ryan duel, getting the biggest MTDs and completely rolling the enemy team like a titan. That feeling, in my opinion, is the best feeling for a tank player, and it cannot be topped. That said, if it was today's day of Overwatch 2, I'd say about a 3.5, because while being fun, you're basically a glorified punching bag. When we talk about Ryan, we gotta talk about Zarya. Zarya is up next with her tankiness of about 3 stars. Zarya becoming a solo tank in Overwatch 2 originally posed some challenges, but I think the Overwatch team has done a great job of making her work. Zarya has a total of 750 HP now, she behaves like the off-tank version of Ryan, trading tankiness for damage. Zarya can now use both bubbles for herself if needed, increasing her personal tankiness. That being said, Zarya is definitely quite tanky. The downside, of course, is that if you use both of your bubbles, you are, quote, hecked. Emong 2022. For damage, though, Zarya's gotta easily get five stars. Zarya is the off-tank version of Ryan. Last time I say it, I promise, but Zarya can brawl really well in Overwatch 2. She can get to 80 energy quite easily, be able to start shredding in team fights. The only key is how you use those bubbles. If you use both right away to get to 80 charge, but aren't in a safe spot, well, then you can get punished for it fast. But high skilled Zarya's will be able to sustain high energy, keep teammates alive with bubbles, while also doing high amounts of damage. Don't be shocked to see Zarya's getting the most damage done in games. That doesn't allow you to flame your teammates because you have gold damage, do you hear me? Anyways. Moving on to mobility, I'm actually going to give Zarya two stars. But wait, you're thinking, Zarya doesn't have any movement abilities. Well, that's where you're wrong, actually. Zarya, the right-click boop damage has been changed, and you are able to boop yourself much further than previously in Overwatch. This allows you to get to small high grounds that may have been previously just out of reach. The first one that comes to mind for me is King's Row Third Point, the high ground in the middle of third. You know the one with the mega underneath? Yeah, well, Zarya can now right-click jump onto that high ground if the card is nearby, contesting that high ground. Never thought I'd see that one. For her utility, I'm going to give Zarya actually only three stars. Zarya bubbles are an extremely useful resource, and they used to be the only way to be able to cleanse Ananade in the past. However, this has changed with the introduction of Kiriko, as she can now cleanse anti-healing. I was going to give this a four. However, the natures of bubble become a little bit more selfish. In a lot of ways, using two bubbles on yourself is more useful than trying to use one for yourself and one on a teammate. This allows you to get higher charge fast. The saving grace for the utility score of Zarya is also her boop jump, or her right click jump. This allows you to get back from spawn slightly faster, as well as able to contest previously unobtainable high grounds is an amazing quality of life change for Zarya players. For her ultimate, easy four stars. Graviton Surge is still by far one of the best ultimates in the game. The only downside is there's a lot of times where you need team follow-up to capitalize on enemies trapped in the Graviton Surge. This, however, is not a huge hurdle anymore, as Grav has been in such a staple ultimate in Overwatch for six years that most players know how to follow up on it. If you are new, however, and your Zarya has Grav, be ready to either combo your ultimate like Hanzo Dragon, or be ready to hold your W key in and get the kills to follow up her play. For fun, I gotta give Zarya five stars. Most players know that distinct sound of angry bees, Zarya at 100 charge just beaming down enemies. That feeling is amazing, as you get to keep your bubbles to save teammates in danger. You're both the carry, the savior, and everyone's favorite teammate. I think that Zarya is going to be an interesting chess matchup versus Ryan on brawl maps like King's Row, 
as Zarya is the off-tank version of Ryan. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next up, let's talk about Orisa. Orisa got some major changes in Overwatch 2, and for tankiness, I will give her four stars. Orisa in Overwatch 2 has been reworked from a stationary bunker shield tank to this brawly, javelin-wielding horse lord. Her fortify still exists and gives her a 100 HP over health buff, but that's not all. She also has a javelin spin that eats incoming damage and projectiles, like D.Va's defense matrix. Warning, this does not eat Sigma Rock. I can't get over that, but yeah, just as a heads up, I do that a lot, so. Luckily with her spear, her last ability is a range stun that can be used and thrown as a skill shot. It's pretty good at buying yourself some space and time to get your cooldown rotation or two in. The balance between getting kills with the spear and using it to keep you up longer will be a difficult playstyle decision players will have to make for themselves. For damage, is only going to get about two stars. is not the tank you want to pick if your goal is to put up big damage numbers. Her key to victory are her systematic usage of her cooldowns to rotate in and out of the brawl fight, securing space as needed for teammates. Orisa's big damage tool is her Javelin Spear, which can be thrown every 6 seconds doing 80 damage if you land one, while also pinning them to a wall, stunning them for a second. This is Orisa's main combo, as if you land a spear on a 200 HP target, you can quickly burst them down with a series of headshots, as long as they don't get healed. This doesn't happen too often, but it feels super rewarding when it does. For mobility, Orisa only gets one star. Orisa has traded her Bunker Style for a Brawl Style, However, she's still slow as can be. Her only movement speed ability she can do is during her Javelin Spear. She moves 20% faster, I think? Hey, I think it's 20% moving forward, but only forward. It's good for rushing in when you want to use her ultimate, but the ult doesn't really do anything, so that's probably not your best idea. What it is good for is those satisfying pushes off the map. I got a great, I think, 2 or 3k push off the map on Lijang Tower during my playtest, and let me tell you, I haven't had a feeling like that in a while in Overwatch. For utility, I'm going to give Orisa four stars. Orisa's utility is her main attraction. She can stun with her spear, which is great against Roadhogs. Keep that in mind for later. You're definitely going to want to keep that in mind for later. Can eat incoming damage in ultimates with her javelin spin. The spinny spear is what I like to call it. And also becomes super tanky with the fortify buff plus overhealth. The problem here, and what keeps me from five stars, is her utility is entirely selfish. She needs her cooldowns to be able to play the game. They cannot be used to enable teammates, and in doing so, many times can overextend herself. Orisa is definitely a tank to keep an eye on in Overwatch 2 as she's both fun, but also probably a small buff away from being top tier. Ultimate, zero stars. I didn't think we were getting an ult worse than Doomfist ult, but we found one. This ult is honestly awful. There's countless ways to counter it. Shield, Kiriko Suzu, killing Arissa, literally walking away. The best use of her ult is realistically used as a quick pull CC. It gives fortify and extra damage resistance and overhealth. It's really the tank version of High Noon before it got buffed seven times. Uh, honestly, probably don't even use it. Although it's... I don't have a lot to say about this ultimate. It's just bad. For overall fun though, Arissa gets an easy five stars. Overwatch 1 players, hear me out. Orisa in Overwatch 1 was miserable. While being an AFK pull bot was super unfun, and did the Overwatch team nail this one. In Beta 2, Orisa wasn't very fun since they nerfed her spear, the skill shot, and most fun part of her kit, but it seems they saw the error of their ways. I also may have pushed a little bit, and uh, restoring that back to 6 seconds, but that's not important. The flow of Orisa's gameplay feels super fun to play, and I hope Overwatch 1 players seriously give her a chance. She's worth it. When you talk about Orisa, though, you must then talk about Sigma. And for Sigma, I gotta give him a tankiness score of about a 3. Rating Sigma's tankiness is quite hard to do. Sigma's health pool is quite small, only being 550, with shields not armor. Armor is what most tanks, well, tanky. But he's extremely survivable, with a personal shield for himself and teammates of 700 HP, a small personal defense matrix on a cooldown, his suck, and a one-shot stun combo with rock primary fire. Remember, the rock was buffed damage. He sure can handle himself for long periods of time, but his overall tankiness? Well, depends on how he uses his cooldowns. For damage, Sigma undisputedly gets five stars. Hell, we might have to make a sixth. Sigma's damage outputs are crazy, and it's very consistent damage. 
If you can hit your shots, the two orbs that have to be shot together as projectiles are sometimes quite tricky to hit. They don't behave like other weapons in the game and are highly unique. However, if you have the aim, that with hitting consistent rocks makes you a formidable force. Quite often, Sigmas will have the most damage done in the game, and it's not even close. Sigma easily gets five stars. For mobility, Sigma only gets a one. He has no mobility tools in his kit. His kinetic grasp can be a pseudo movement tool if we're stretching it. Not for speed, but for survivability to get back out of fights. Though I don't really think I should count that, so let's move on. For his utility, easily five stars. Sigma has the best utility kit in the game, in my opinion. The only other contender would be D.Va. With a 700 HP shield and a personal defense matrix that can eat ults and incoming damage while giving yourself shields, as well as one of the few stuns in the game still remaining, Sigma is a force to be reckoned with. Small meta prediction, I think it's going to be Dive with Winston Sombra at the start of the game, but I also think there'll be a counter comp with Sigma as the tank for the anti-dive comp. Keep an eye on Sigma. Sigma's ultimate, I also gotta give it five stars. Sigma's ultimate is the same from Overwatch 1, but it doesn't pack any less punch. Being able to CC enemies into the air helplessly and then slam them from half of their health pool is by far one of the best ultimates in the game. Also, with Sigma's high damage from his primary fire, comboed with the enemies that are helpless in the air, makes it so Sigma can secure solo kills with his ultimate on multiple targets at once. Just don't solo flux that Cassidy that's been holding High Noon. I've learned that many, many times by playing with Emon. Thanks, buddy. Um, that's probably the thing I'll miss the most, is you fluxing Cassidy's and killing us all. For overall fun, I gotta give Sigma four stars. I had a blast playing Sigma, honestly. Sigma is the same character in large part as from Overwatch 1, but the only difference is now you're juiced up and even stronger. Playing Sigma in dominating lobbies can be a rush as hitting consistent primary shots feels very rewarding. I think players will like to play Sigma, especially with him being one of the strongest tanks at the launch of the game. Hey, playing things that are broken is always a little bit fun, right? Speaking of a little bit broken, Wrecking Ball. Tankiness, five stars. Honestly, he deserves seven. Wrecking Ball feels right at home in 5v5. He's basically been playing his own game since he was released. Ball has amazing self-sustain and is able to run in and out of fights at a crazy speeds on top of having 700 HP and his shields being able to stack up to a whopping 1300 HP as long as he gets max value of five targets. 100 base shield and an extra 100 per enemy nearby. Wrecking Ball's key is being able to run away mid-fight, grab a health pack, and by the time he comes back, we'll have his grapple off cooldown. Ball is very similar to how he was in Overwatch 1, but now he doesn't have to worry as much about CC. Ball players are thriving. For his damage, I can only give Ball two stars. Ball's damage has never been the highest. His primary fire is quite low compared to other tanks. However, Ball has insane potential to do damage since he can boop enemies off the map. You also can't forget his Mines, which is the highest damage potential he has. Mines has always been an ult that is both amazing, but also meh, as it requires either really high levels of mechanical skill, and game sense, or a little bit of luck. For mobility, Ball easily gets five stars. Ball's movement was so strong, that they had to nerf his grapple in Overwatch 1, so that if you spawned, it started on cooldown. This was done to prevent some crazy stalls you could do on Ball, especially on 2CP maps. Ball can contest high ground easily like Winston or D.Va, as well as able to speed back to point, especially if you're the first to die as a tank. The old I fed let me swap Ball here to come back and try to save my team and make up for my misplay. Ball's movement techs have almost unlimited skill potential, so being a really advanced Ball player takes countless hours of practice, but if you can get good at them, you can be one of the best and most annoying players in the game. For Ball's overall utility, I'd give him about three stars. Ball doesn't have as much as team utility as other characters, but he does have one, Pile Driving. Pile Drive is Ball's engagement tool and is an extremely useful for dive DPS or even snipers to follow up on. In Overwatch 2, Pile Drive is even better by virtue of less stuns and a buffing of shielding for himself, as well as less damage output since there's only five teammates to shoot at you instead of six. Ball players be thriving. For Ball's ultimate, I'd give him about three stars. Ball's ultimate potential is still pretty good. The best ball players are able to both deny space as well as secure kills with perfectly timed mines and slam 
combos. However, this ult does have some downsides, being that if it's not perfectly set up, it's reliant on an enemy walking into a mine or two, or getting booped in by your teammates. Very similar to how it behaved in Overwatch 1, not a whole lot to talk about here. For fun, I'm gonna give Balbo two stars. Ah, I hate to be that guy, but Ball just didn't seem that fun. Being the solo tank, you have to do all your tanking duties of taking up space, drawing cooldowns, trying to secure kills, pushing the payload, contesting point. A lot of the pressure's on you now, and you don't have any of the shiny new buffs that other tanks have gotten, besides the small health buff, which really kind of makes it a lot more pressure on you. When I played both of the Overwatch 2 betas, as well as the playtest, Ball, despite being a very strong and good pick, especially on Koth and push maps, it just wasn't for me. I'm sorry. Maybe you'll have more fun on it. Next up, we got my old friend, Winton. Winston gets his tankiness score of about three stars. Winston got some nice direct and indirect buffs in Overwatch 2, with a larger health pool of 550, and with fewer enemies to do damage to his bubble when deployed, Winston is able to stay healthy for longer periods of time in the fight. In the first round of Overwatch League this year, as well as in Beta 1, Winston was dominating the meta. This caused his buffed at the time bubble to get nerfed back to where it is in Overwatch 1. In Beta 2, Winston definitely did not see nearly the peaks that he did in the first round, but that was mostly due to a dominating Junker Queen. Since the big queen nerfs, Winston has started to see some play again, and I believe Winston will be a great pick for veteran tank players who understand how to play aggressive in Overwatch 2. He's not the tankiest, but his kit is so good, you might not need it. For Winston's damage, he gets a solid 3 stars from me. Winston gets a nice couple upgrades in Overwatch 2, with the big one being Sniper Monkey. Overwatch 2 has added an alternate right-click fire to Winston, which is a ranged hitscan attack. This allows Winston to do small amounts of damage. 50 damage per full charged alternate fire shot landed from somewhere up on high ground without having to drop down into a potential group of enemies to farm ult charge. This gives you a good feeling of always actively doing something as a player, even when there's times there's not much for you to do at the moment. This is actually one of the biggest mistakes players make is they end up thinking, oh, I'm not doing anything here, and they end up trying to do something else and they end up feeding. This might be a great way to keep people feeling like, hey, I'm actually doing something. Winston's power and damage comes from his ability to cleave and do damage on multiple enemies at a time, even through barriers. With less CC being in Overwatch 2, as well as less overall damage, Winston can stay in the fight a bit longer doing damage before needing to jump back to safety, or in further if your name is Boger. For mobility, Winston gets an easy 5 stars. Winston's mobility is the same as it was in Overwatch 1, not a whole lot to cover here, but jump has always been one of the best movement abilities for all the tanks in Overwatch. Able to contest high ground, get back to point fast, as well as deal up to 50 damage on landing if you land on top of an enemy, Winston is still one of the best mobility tanks in Overwatch 2. For utility, Winston also gets another 5 stars. Winston's utility is disguised a little bit harder than Diva's Defense Matrix, or Zarya's Bubble, but can you guess what it is? That's right, it's his Bubble. Bubble is mostly used as a proactive ability jumping into enemies and popping bubble to block damage and or cooldowns, but it can also be reactionary. Most of the best Winstons I've ever played with are separated completely by their bubble usage and their primal mechanics. Winston players who are disciplined to save bubble just a second or two longer than someone who panics and drops it right as they land will be far better off in team fights. Winston is still the most mobile disruptor tank in Overwatch 1 and brings tons of value to the fight. Speaking of Primal, I love Primal <laughs> so much. Unfortunately, I'm only gonna give it 2.5 stars, but man, I really do love this ult. It was the first mechanically intensive ultimate for tanks in the game. I remember watching Karki's Primal Winston guide so many times. I think I even made one of myself back in 2018. I wonder if I can find that. Primal is one of those ultimates that most players use as a second life, jumping in deep, getting pressured, popping Primal, flailing around for 10 seconds, or in Overwatch 1, about 3 seconds, and then dying. Primal's skill ceiling is so high for players that want to put in the work for it, though. There was a saying in Overwatch League called the Primal Blade. Gooshui, the Winston player for the Spark, used to be able to consistently get 2-3 to three kills with Primal, almost like Genji Blade. This tool was insanely powerful in the correct hands. I would highly recommend putting in some time into practicing the combos on this one. But overall, Winston Primal, definitely not as strong as some of the other tank ultimates. For fun though, Winston gets an easy 4 stars. Winston can be a blast to play. Getting in deep and knocking people around in Primal 
Especially carrying someone halfway across the map and then depositing them off the side feels great. Winston Overwatch 1 felt pretty squishy by the end to many players, as they did not have the synergy of a proper D.Va following them in. Overwatch 2 removes that reliance of an off tank to keep you from meeting the spawn room instantly, while also keeping the high flying fun Winston brings. When you talk about Winston, you must always talk about D.Va. D.Va's up next, and her tankiness gets an easy 4 stars. Did someone call for main tank D.Va? D.Va got a big armor buff going into beta 2, and now also got a buff to her booster damage, going from 10 to 25 damage on impact. D.Va's total health pool is identical, sharing the same armor health ratio of total of 650 to Reinhardt. This combo with a 3 second defense matrix makes D.Va, a character many were afraid of in the 5v5 format, able to play aggressive, pushing into secure kills on enemies, as well as able to play more the classic D.Va style of a defensive player who looks to protect teammates with defense matrix. D.Va's tankiness is surprisingly high in Overwatch 2, and I hope you give her a shot, because I think you'll know what I mean. For damage, I'm going to give D.Va 3.5 stars. D.Va does a surprising amount of damage in Overwatch 2. The booster buff to 25 damage has made her burst potential much higher when comboed with a melee. Remember, flight is not cancelled with melee in Overwatch 2. In Overwatch 1, it was common to start boosters with a melee, or finish them with a melee for a slight burst, but in Overwatch 2, meleeing can be done while flying, meaning you can continue to charge to get point blank even after the boop melee combo. I found this super effective against targets like Zen, who have limited tools to avoid a 650 HP, fully armored flying tank coming at them. For mobility, D.Va gets an easy 5 stars. D.Va has the best controlled mobility in the game. D.Va has a 2 full seconds of flight, able to move in any direction at any time. Perfect for going in deep on the enemy backline to finish off kills, or to turn around and peel back for your teammates. Most of the tanks in Overwatch 2 are very much aggressive, hold W, do damage tanks. However, D.Va is the big standout for being able not only to play aggressive, but be that peeling teammate that every support loves. Which leads me into Utility, for which D.Va is 5 stars. In Seasons 1, 2, and 3 of Overwatch League, the joke was that D.Va players have the best job security in the league, and in Overwatch 2, that might keep being true. The others that come to mind are Zarya with Bubble, and the shielding tanks of Ryan and Sigma. Zarya is inherently more selfish in Overwatch 2, as using Bubble selfishly enables the Zarya player to perform much more, especially in the early fight, and tanks like Ryan and Sigma are not really peeling tanks. This leaves D.Va the queen of peel. However, peeling for supports is a thing of the past. Supports must rely on the, each other, as well as their own abilities to stay alive in the 5v5 format. This is going to always be the case. Teammates' help is welcomed, but the difference between a good and a great player will be the ability to succeed even on their own. To make this tangent tie all the way back to D.Va, Defense Matrix is an amazing tool. Able to eat many incoming ults, and with it being three full seconds now, can now make the best D.Va players become your worst nightmare to play against. I, for one, would love to become that D.Va player, and maybe I'll ask Emong for some tips. Speaking of asking Emong for some tips, he's really good at this part, the ultimate, which I gotta give four stars. Hear me out on this, tank ults in Overwatch 2 have taken a pretty big nerf overall. Ryan Shatter can be easily countered with Kitiko Suzu now. Rissa Bongo is this useless self-grav thing that can be countered six ways from Sunday. Queen ult is so slow to charge and can be shut down by Suzu quite easily. This makes Bomb quite good in the grand scheme of tank ults. Big damage, a free life in case you get demect, and the remech crush, which can be hilarious. I know it's not the ult, but it's kind of part of it. Point is here powerful, pretty fast charging ult with less shields in the game to hide behind will make D.Va ult one of the better ultimates at the launch of Overwatch 2. For overall fun, I'm actually going to give D.Va a solid 5 stars. Oh man, I didn't think to be rating D.Va this highly, but man, she is fun right now. I think at this point it's known I got to test some D.Va and she is strong. Not like game breakingly so, but more in a I don't blow up like a tank like I do in Overwatch 1 type of strong. I had a game with ML7 where I farmed something like 50 plus of limbs in a 3 to 1 or 3 to 0 game of hybrid, and I had a blast playing her. I'm not good enough or confident enough to go for the crush remake clips like other experienced D.Va players, but I sure can shoot bomb across the map at just the right moment to 
to watch everyone run, but fail to make it to cover in time. I think D.Va is someone you should very much consider playing at the launch of the game, as I think you'll get some long overdue fun on her. D.Va definitely is, should be on your list of tanks to play at the start of Overwatch 2. Next up, we got Roadhog. How did I almost forget about Roadhog? I, oh man, what's wrong with me? You know what it probably was? I think I was suppressing this bad memory that I had from my playtest because Roadhog is good in Overwatch 2. For tankiness, Roadhog gets an easy five stars. Hell, he should get six. I'm not gonna really beat around the bush here. Hog is straight up busted right now. Hog used to be countered by Ana and CC heavily. One anti nade and Hog pop like a balloon. But let me introduce you to Kitiko. With the cleanse ability, Hog can walk in, eat cooldowns, get naded, slept, etc., then get cleansed, stand up, and take a big 350 HP self heal while also getting his 50% damage reduction. And don't forget, he also has the passive where he gets booped 30% less than he used to. This was actually Reinhardt's old passive of Steadfast that every tank has. And then to top it all off, he also gets an easy one shot hook combo. And ah, oh, dude. I'm just gonna move on to damage, or I'm gonna get really tilted here. Which, also for damage, Roadhog gets five stars. Hog is an absolute menace. I called for Hog's nerfs in Overwatch 1 over a year ago now. Wow, time really does fly. At first, people didn't think he was busted, but boy, did they learn over time. And he is just as strong in Overwatch 2. He would consistently hit one-shot hook combos on 250 HP plus targets. And that's not all. There's also less shields. In Overwatch 1, the counter to Hog was double shield. Marissa Sigma comps were very good at dealing with the pesky hog flankers, kind of why it was meta. But now in Overwatch 2, there's only one possible shield. That one shield tank that's a decent counterpick to hog is Sigma. Regardless, hog can constantly open fights with a pick, walk away and heal, and come back six seconds later looking to pull in another victim to the shadows with him. Hog is a menace. For mobility, hog obviously only gets one star, but I'm giving him one star because even though he has no movement abilities, he might as well have one. His take a breather and literally just walking to point or wherever you want to go on Hog is genuinely impossible to stop if you don't have at least a few ways to slow him down, which in Overwatch is real bad when you need multiple people to pick multiple characters to slow down one hero pick. For tanks, your good options are either mirroring the Hog, Orisa, or Sigma, or likely high level players will end up going Winston or D.Va and just kind of ignoring him, killing the rest of his team and then come back for him later. But regardless though, do you see the problem here? If you have to pick multiple stuns to stop one character, we're in some trouble. For utility, Hog only gets two stars. His utility isn't really existent. Uh, it's entirely selfish, but I'd be lying to you if it wasn't damn strong. Hook to set up consistent one shots on targets and his self heal can make him one of the most infuriating heroes to play against and makes a mean combo with Kiriko. For his ultimate, Hog actually gets a solid three stars here. Hog got a pretty significant upgrade to his ultimate in Overwatch 2. You can use your abilities such as healing and your hook, as well as control how your whole Hog shoots. The big downside to Hog ult used to be, when you used it, you were locked in, but that weakness is now gone. Also, by the way, if you haven't seen hog Kiriko ult combo, my lord do I have a surprise for you, especially if you're a Ryan player. Um, I'm sure this will be in here at some point, but this is disgusting. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that's amazing. And to wrap it all up, of course, is fun. I would say is a solid three stars. Hog is the same character from Overwatch 1, just juiced up even more somehow. This will be the tank every pub stomper wants to use. Also, good thing that there will be hopefully less smurfs with SMS protection, because this overpowered self-healing one-shotting machine is every smurf's dream. And myself and many others, our worst nightmare. I really don't like Hog, and I'm really tired of seeing him in my games. And I'm also really tired of not being able to kill him. So that's it. This took me a long time to write, and I'm never doing this again. Anyways, unless people really truly love it, then maybe, I don't know. I truly do love this game so much, and the past two years of Overwatch 1 have been complete hell. I can't wait. We're finally here. I think the Overwatch team has done a pretty good job going into Overwatch 2. I don't really see, other than Queen and maybe Doomfist, any of the tanks being completely unplayable. That's why some of the stars seem in the middle. But overall, the big thing is I found that most of the tanks are quite enjoyable in Overwatch 2. 
for those who don't know, I actually stream all my content over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash flats. I don't normally make standalone videos like this. Uh, I will be streaming Overwatch 2 every day, starting around 12 to 2 EST. Also, as a small reminder, there will be drops on Twitch starting October 7th. You'll be able to get a legendary Kiriko skin. So uh, hopefully you swing by, say hi, or at least maybe lurk for a little bit and get your free skin. So did you enjoy this? If you did, and you aren't subbed, hit a deal. Hit the subscribe button. Helps me out a ton. I also make content on my second channel, Flats 2, which is much more talking pieces, much more opinions about either Overwatch or things in my normal life. Uh, Flats Clips, which is just a clips channel. And then more Flats, which is content that would normally end up here, especially gameplay content that I can't fit because I already do daily uploads. Anything more than daily uploads gets a little bit tough. It will be uploaded over there on more Flats. Basically, it's a spill-off channel. So if you enjoy all the content here and you want more, head over there as well. But uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. So I appreciate you all as always. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you really did enjoy it. And uh, I'm excited to play Overwatch 2. I'm excited to see where we all can go. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow.